Hey everybody, welcome to Tuesdays with Alvin with me, Alvin. Today we don't have too many pens to show off, but some very, very exciting pens, so I think it's a nice balance. Um, we are looking at a brand new release from Pilot and a brand new release from Tibaldi, which are both limited editions. So can't wait to get started. Of course, uh, if you guys have any questions at all about anything I'm showing off today, or any uh, questions just about stationery, fountain pens, just this whole hobby in general, definitely let me know in the chat. Also want to let everybody know that we do repost all of our live streams onto TikTok or uh, onto YouTube. Uh, so if you miss anything during the stream, you can check it out on YouTube later in the night um, and see everything. What's up, Halfback Dynasty number two? All right, all right. So let's go ahead and switch the camera. We'll wait for a couple more people to join in, I think, and then we'll go ahead and get started. How's everybody doing today? Thanks for the likes. And once again, if you guys have any questions at all, definitely let me know. Um, we'll do a little bit of a Q&A or just a free-for-all for questions um, after I show off the pens since we only have two pens to show off. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and switch the camera. Oh, just sent myself a like. There we go. Sweet. So the newest release that we have today is the brand new Tibaldi Benonia Divine. So since we only have two pens to show off today, I figured we would also do a bit of an unboxing. So this is the Tibaldi Benonia Divine. This is the box that it comes in. What's up, Vince? How you doing today? Let's go ahead and unopen this. So inside, very simple. We have a beautiful display box can see it's a textured ivory all around super shiny and felt on the bottom I'm doing great Vince thanks for asking man and then let's go ahead and open this up so magnetic enclosure you can see the Tibaldi plaque on the inside as well that away and then inside we have the brand new Tibaldi Benonia Divine so let's go ahead and break down everything we know about this pen so this is Tibaldi's newest limited edition for their most popular Benonia model the Benonia model is a very classic cigar style pen that is a little bit more pointed than totally rounded off. So it's a really nice in-between uh, between a pointed finial and a rounded finial. You have three bands around the bottom of the cap here that is very iconic for Tibaldi. And then a standard steel clip that is anodized to look gold. We have another band right here. Of course, all of these resins are poured by hand, guys. So every single one of these is going to look incredibly unique. I've seen some examples that'll look a lot more brown than ivory. And this one in particular has a lot of ivory compared to some other models I've seen. Looking a little bit more carefully at the barrel. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me try to zoom in. You can see that it is engraved very subtly. It says Tibaldi made in Italy on the barrel there. And here is where the magic for this pen is. This beautiful 18 karat nib by Tibaldi that has a two-tone stamping of Christ on the cross there. 10 p.m., that's pretty late. It is only 3 p.m. here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hold up a loop to the camera here. Let's see if we can get a better view of this nib little pro tip for you guys yeah check out this absolutely gorgeous nib and that's solid 18 karat gold that is plated in rhodium with a little bit of that yellow gold 
that is available to see as well. A little bit hard to kind of see this one. Absolutely insane level of detail here on the Tibaldi Bononia Divine. Braxtonator, you're in luck. We still have plenty in stock. These are available right now on atlasstationers.com for $600 on the dot. So these are limited edition. Once they sell out, they are going to be completely gone. So I would definitely not wait too long. You wanna see it on the desk? Sure. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Vince uh, Pearson, um, this is $600 on the dot at atlasstationers.com. Oh. Here's how it looks on the desk. You can post this pen, pretty friendly. So if you prefer to post, it's very comfortable. One of the most notable features that is kind of a subtle detail on this pen is the threading is all the way up at the very end of the pen. So it's incredibly comfortable to hold because there's no dedicated grip section. So you can see even when you're all the way up on the collar here, you're stopped by the threads and it's very comfortable, but you can hold this pen back as far as you'd like. And because there's no dedicated grip section, you don't get that step up, which can be very uncomfortable for a lot of people, especially people that hold their pen a lot further back makes it even better if you also prefer to post because once again, you get a much better balance in the hand. Uh, this pen in particular holds about two to two and a half milliliters of ink. Uh, it is a internal piston filler. There is no ink window though. So just keep that in mind, but you can see here, internal piston filler. And the Tibaldi's hold a fair amount of ink. So you could probably go, you know, a month to two months between fills. Obviously that just totally depends on how much you write. Absolutely gorgeous. So once again, y'all, the Tibaldi Benonia Divine for $600. Let me know in the chat how you guys like this pen. For those of you who are maybe watching afterwards on our YouTube channel, definitely let us know in the comments as well. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this new Tibaldi Benonia Divine. All right, all right. I'm gonna go ahead and put this away for now, but if you guys wanna see it again, since we're only gonna show off two pens today, more than happy to pull this guy out. We got all the time in the world. Uh, Slowpoke Rodriguez, um, could you clarify uh, your question? Vinted is absolutely amazing. I'm so impressed by the stamping detail on this pen and the quality. All of the extra detail that they get in that stamping is seriously unmatched. And Tibaldi, if you've seen any of their other nib designs for their gold nibs, it's seriously so, so high quality and so detailed. So that is the Tibaldi Bononia Divine, y'all. Let's go ahead and put it aside for now because we have the super exciting Pilot Vanishing Point 2022 Limited Edition. So this is the box it comes in. It comes in a much larger box than the standard Vanishing Point. And let's go ahead and get right into it. So you can see there, it is the red coral. This is the addition uh, for the numbering. It is number 1,727. Uh, Vince Pearson, I will show you the pens that I'm carrying today in just a moment. Um, after this reveal, I'll go ahead and show them off. I've got them right next to me actually. So Pilot Limited Edition. This is like a nice leatherette gift box that has that shiny, foil Pilot logo. You know, I uh, repaired, uh, I did a little repair on somebody's pen earlier. I got a little bit of purple on my hands, but I, uh, I don't really know exactly what he had in his pen. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get right into this. Opening the box up, we are met with 
instructions on how to use the box. If you guys didn't know, this is, this is how you use the box. So it is instructing me to lift the foam off and then that there is a hidden tray, which I already knew about, but maybe you guys didn't. So underneath we have a little tray that shows you the cartridge for the pen. And then this is a little sheath that goes over the cartridge. That way when you're clicking the vanishing point, you're not pushing up against the cartridge itself. So those things are just underneath the pen pillow there in a nice little slide out tray. And then inside we have the 2022 limited edition North American Pilot Vanishing Point. Of course, you have that Pilot capless medium tag. I'm gonna go ahead and gently pull that off for right now to show this off. Instructions on how to open the box inside the box. Yeah, it's a little, <laughs> a little confusing why they chose to do that, but you know what, I can respect it. So here it is, the limited edition Pilot Vanishing Point Red Coral. So I just want to say this right now before we get into it. This is an incredibly limited edition model. There is only 2,022 in the entire world, and they are selling out insanely quickly. We actually only have three left in stock. So I will not be offended if you guys tune out to check out this pen right away, and then you can probably make it back in time. Um, but there's only three left here at Atlas. So if you are looking for the Red Coral Vanishing Point, you got to do it now. I won't be offended. Uh, just Clarabella, we still have the Loteria um, Retro 51s in stock. I don't know exactly how many we have left, though. Um, but you can find that on atlasstationers.com in our new arrival section. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. You know, this box makes a lot of pen boxes look terrible. This is a very special box they only do for limited edition, so it's, uh, it's you know, not ordinary. <laughs> okay, so the Coral Red, or the Red Coral Vanishing Point is inspired by uh, the Mediterranean Sea Red Coral, which is known for its bright and vibrant colors. The inspiration behind picking this particular, uh, you know, coral motif is that um, the uh, coral was worn on amulets by sailors uh, for thousands of years, you know, all the way back in ancient times. And it was a, uh, it was used to protect against evil and ill will. So that is their inspiration behind the coral motif. So just like the sailors back in the day would carry coral as protection against evil, you could carry the pen and be mightier than the sword. Oh yeah, absolutely amazing. And it's really hard to see this finish. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna hold up the loop again and let's take a much closer look at the details of this pen. So let me go ahead and get lined up here. And let me know if you guys can see that better. I don't know how the resolution on TikTok Lives are, but here we have a much closer look So you can see it's screen printed Pilot Limited Edition Japan. On the band here, we have the numbering of the pen. So this one is number 1,727 out of 2022. Uh, so you guys are familiar. Um, every single year, Pilot does a global limited edition vanishing point release, and it's always limited to the year that it's released. So this year there's 2022, next year there will be 2023. You can see Pilot Limited Edition there. And just take a look at the gorgeous but subtle pattern on this pen. You can see there is just this really subtle kind of dithering to this pen that really emulates the red coral beautifully. Let's go ahead and look at the nib while we're in the loop, huh? So this is your standard vanishing point tip with the solid 18 karat gold nib that is plated in rhodium to give it that silver coloring. Uh, it is not diamond dust. This is a special technique for lacquer. Uh, so I'm not gonna say your name out loud because I might get in trouble, but 311331, um, 
This is a brass bodied pen that is done with a um, natural Japanese lacquer on top. And they use this really special technique um, to kind of get that really subtle dithering. I believe it might be very tiny pieces of flake that are added on top in a very even distribution. And this is a great chance to demonstrate the trap door. Can you guys see that in there? Let me know in the chat if you can see inside of the pen here. Uh, Carolyn 917, this limited edition pilot vanishing point, uh, red coral is available for $300. Um, but Carolyn, that's great that you ask because this pen, there's only three left here at Atlas Stationery, so definitely try to buy it right away. So if you guys can see, the feed of this nib actually presses down this spring-loaded trap door. And we can see that that tipping is perfectly made by Pilot, as always. So as you uh, click and unclick this pen, the trap door always seals it. So even if you're not using this pen every day, that trap door, I will say, is quite good. And it does a phenomenal job at keeping the nib wet for about a week, week and a half, depending on what ink you have in there. But it's a great little feature. And then something else that you'll be able to see here now that the nib is extended is you can see how it's very slightly canted. So this is like the middle of the pen. I know it's a little bit blurry. And you can see that the nib is a little bit canted, and that is for righties um, so that the nib is incredibly comfortable and in the right orientation when you're gripping it. But I will say I am a lefty, and I've never had issues with my vanishing point with this kind of canted design because it's very subtle. It really helps righties out a lot, but it does not uh, affect lefties negatively, if that makes sense. It's a pretty good view, huh? I really love using this uh, this loop on top of the lens. Do this all day long. Um, definitely not. You know, here, let me show this in the hand real quick. So this is the way that you're intended to hold the pen. Um, but even if you like to put your index finger on top of the pen, I know a lot of people like to do that with tripod grip. It's really not uncomfortable. This is super rounded and it doesn't really stick up all that much as you can see. So even with a tripod grip, it's very comfortable. But pinching it like this, this is called calligrapher's grip, is super natural for me. And even um, before I switched to tripod grip, I used to use four finger grip. And even this is pretty comfortable for me even if it's not comfortable for my hand. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, not everybody likes this clip. Um, so that is an important consideration. Um, I will say that personally, when I first got the Pilot Vanishing Point uh, that I own, like over, uh, it, you know, it's been forever, about a decade, I actually hated the clip and I could not get used to it. But I, this was like my most expensive pen purchase ever, so I just forced myself to get used to it. And honestly, after just a couple days of really giving the pen a chance, I really learned to fall in love with it, um, and it became comfortable right away. So I would say if you like it right away, that's amazing. If you don't like it right away, just keep trying it because it'll probably become more comfortable once you kind of learn to uh, you know, use your grip with this particular clip. Um, Killer Keith 1490, can you do a video on ink blotters? Um, yeah, we'll keep that in mind. We actually don't carry ink blotters currently, but we have a lot of requests from customers for that. Uh, so I'll talk to my team and we'll see what we can do for you. Um, but keep an eye out for that. That's a great suggestion, Killer Keith 1490. Thank you. So here we have it Pilot Vanishing Point. Insanely reliable. If you guys don't own a vanishing point yet, you got to get one. It is a must have in any fountain pen enthusiast collection. Even if you're not getting the limited edition red coral today, the standard editions are absolutely beautiful. So you can't go wrong. I've owned mine for over 10 years and I just can't get enough of it. But I'm actually not carrying it with me today because I have some other pens. But yeah, there we have it. Let me know in the chat what you guys think of the 2022 limited edition Pilot Vanishing Point. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the box for now. I'm not going to wrap it up, though, because I'm going to polish it before I put it away.
can you write with it? I can't write with this one in particular, but let me grab one that I can write with, okay? Uh, res1.xt, thanks for the question. Hey Josh, can I borrow your vanishing point real quick? Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna grab one. Uh, yeah, in my case, I carry three with me and then I usually carry one in my pocket. Uh, I just realized that there's only two in here. Is my pen up there? My, uh, my Nakaya? It's gotta be somewhere, that's boring. <laughs> All right, I'm going to look for that. Uh, but yeah, I normally carry three pens plus one in my pocket. Um, but this is a pilot vanishing point that is ready to be written with. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Let me kind of get readjusted here, y'all. Uh, do you buy into the three or five pen inked at a time standard? Um, I would say I personally keep about four pens on me every day. Um, but let me switch this camera real quick. Uh, but, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I also work at a fountain pen shop, so I could probably keep 20 pens on me and be just fine. Um, but I limit myself just because of the price of my pens. Um, what I would say, though, is it's just totally a lifestyle choice. If you find that it works out for you to have three different pens, you know, three different nib sizes, different colored inks, you know, that's a beautiful thing. When I was in college, I would keep about six to eight pens on me at any given time. Um, just different nibs, different, you know, ink colors. If I had to, you know, do a test on paper, I would have something with an extra fine, waterproof, quick drying ink. Um, and then, you know, I have inks for doing calligraphy and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, it's really just a matter of what you find that you need in your everyday life. Um, but uh, I actually keep about 10 pens inked up and I, I use them mostly at home. And then these four pens like just always stay on me. Uh, when I'm at work. What's up, I underscore clowny. We woo Xian. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad that you're entertained by me. That means a lot. Um, Res1.xts, how long have you collected pens? About a decade. Uh, I got my very first pen in high school. Um, bought it for myself. It was the Twisby Diamond 580. Um, and just totally fell in love with the hobby. Okay. Uh, I got a notepad right here. I'm going to go ahead and switch off of my face again. What pen are you carrying in your pocket? It doesn't have ink right now because I'm cleaning it. Hey, Phil. Hey, Phil. Could you grab me my Lamy? That's right there, that blue pen. Yeah. Uh, Vince Pearson, real quick. This is the pen that I'm carrying with me today. Uh, this is a 1950s Lamy artist. So this is Lamy before it was ever called Lamy or just Lamy. So it used to go by Lamy artist. I don't know if you guys can see on the barrel there, Lamy artist. So the artist pens were kind of meant to be um, one of the world's first options for affordable fountain pens. Um, prior to the 30s, uh, kind of the 40s, 50s, um, fountain pens were super expensive. They only knew about using gold nibs in fountain pens and using more premium materials for the barrels and other components. Um, so typically when someone bought a fountain pen before World War II, you know, you would buy one pen and have that pen be your pen for life. You would take it with you everywhere, you would maintain it, and then you would pass it down, you know, down the line. Um, so it was really in the 40s and the 50s where kind of collecting pens and getting more affordable options like this really became, you know, a really common option. So that is where Lamy really kind of made their name by making, you know, so many beautiful affordable options. Uh, you know, it's definitely something to consider clowny. You always want to take care of your pens, but pen repair and restoration is also an option as long as not too much damage has been done. You can actually see here on the barrel... You can see the founder of Lamy's name is on this pen. See Joseph Lamy, Germany. Isn't that awesome? And then it has a stainless steel inlaid nib. Are you guys maybe recognizing this design from anywhere? The Lamy 2000. So the, uh, this pen is called the Lamy Artist Perfect 70. Uh, so this pen um, was literally the 
Lamy 2000, before the Lamy 2000, there was another model of this pen that was almost exactly like this called the Perfect 151. And that one had a 14 karat gold nib. So you can consider the Lamy Artist Perfect 151 the predecessor to the Lamy 2000. Since these pens were made in the 50s, the Lamy 2000 was made in 1964. So you can really see how this pen translates directly to a Lamy 2000. You can see their kind of really intelligent design when it came to having a uh, breather hole right there on the bottom. You'll see that on a Lamy 2000. You'll see this inlaid nib on a Lamy 2000, but it's shrouded more. So a key difference between this pen and a Lamy 2000 is the breather hole is exposed outside of that shrouding. And then you have an ink window here, and uh, I'll go ahead and twist that down. The, one of the reasons I got this at a thrift store was because this piston still worked. Look at that. I haven't done any maintenance on this piston and it is so smooth. So uh, as you can see, I haven't inked it yet because I still have to make sure that it's perfectly clean before I dedicate inking and all of that. But yeah, I just picked this up not too long ago. So this is the pen I'm carrying with me today. Pretty cool, right? It, it does kind of look like a Parker 51. Um, you'll notice that their designs are super similar because they both have those inlaid nibs. That's what they're called. Awesome, y'all. Kanye fan number one, what's up, man? William Dripfo is the best. My name is Joseph. Awesome. The uh, creator of this pen is also named Joseph. That's so cool. <laughs> All right, so that's what I'm carrying. Um, this, I don't know how much you could get this for um, online. I've seen them uh, sell on eBay for about $130. That's probably a little bit too much money, honestly, for a pen like this. I got this for $40 at an antique shop. So you probably wouldn't be able to find it for exactly that price. I think I got a really good deal on it, uh, but I bought this one at an antique shop for 40 bucks. Pretty lucky. All right, I, I hope it's not too late, but here I have an inked up Pilot Vanishing Point that I'll write with here. Let me see if I can kind of angle this down a little bit better. I think it's a fantastic deal, clownly, clowny. <laughs> All right, here is the Pilot Vanishing Point. It's a little bit hard to record as a lefty, but we'll make it happen. All right, not my best work, not too shabby. And this is a Pilot Vanishing Point with a fine nib. Insanely satisfying. This is literally the number one everyday carry fountain pen because everything is one-handed. You pull this pen out of your pocket, out of your case, whatever it may be, with one hand. You click it open with one hand, exposing that amazing 18 karat gold nib. There's a little bit of schmutz on the bottom. There we go. And you put it away all with one hand. So. In the workplace environment, there is seriously nothing better than the Pilot Vanishing Point. I cannot recommend this enough. So these standard edition Vanishing Points, like this matte black Vanishing Point, go for just $156. The limited edition red coral that I showed off today is available for $300, and there's only a couple left in the shop, so definitely try to pick it up soon. All right. Let's go ahead and flip my camera again. All right. I'm a lucky guy, how so? <laughs> I, I mean, I like to think so for certain reasons, but you let me know. All right, you guys wanna see another one of my pens real quick? Let's go ahead and show it off. So this is another pen I'm carrying with me today. This is the Peniter Alchemist in Stromboli Black. 
We do have this one at Atlas Stationers still, and I think we're running a deal on these. So check them out on the website, atlasstationers.com. This pen in particular is made out of a material called zeolite. Oh, thank you for the rose, E. Harris 99. I appreciate that. Oh, Clonnie, you're so nice. <laughs> you're being too kind. Thank you so much. So this pen you can see here is called the Alchemist. It is made out of a material called zeolite. I don't know if you guys can see that, zeolite. So zeolite is a mineral that is formed when water and magma are mixed together to form this porous material. So this material here is entirely porous, so it will absorb the uh, sweat and natural oils of your hand as you write and has this absolutely phenomenal 14 karat quill nib is what they call it. So it's 14 karat gold. They call it the quill nib. Uh, no, this one is the Peniter. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I will happily go back to the Jesus pen in just a moment. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and get the loop in here. Show this magic off. So any um, gold nib Peniter that you get will have this quill nib, but isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I wish I could hold it a little bit more still. There we go. Absolutely gorgeous. Sweet. I love this pen. I use this pen a lot for calligraphy writing um, rather than just everyday note taking. I get enough pens for every purpose, but let's go ahead and do a little bit of writing with it. There's a lot of nib sizes for these. They go up to broad and stub, so you can always get exactly what you're looking for. Uh, but let's go ahead and write something. You guys are all so nice. Here, let's write uh, clowny, since you're being so sweet in the comments. Nice. Sniffs, you're being so kind, thank you. <laughs> uh, this one in particular, the Peniter Alchemist, retailed at about $700, but we have them on sale right now, uh, I believe. So if you go on atlasstationers.com and look up the Peniter Alchemist, I believe this one's on closeout, um, and you should be able to get an additional 20% off uh, on this pen using the discount code LC20. Let me write that down. If you guys could do me a favor and write it down in the comments as well. Uh, two, that was a terrible two. I forgot where I was going there. But use the discount code LASTCHANCE20 for 20% 20 off any Last Chance product on our website. Thank you, E. Harris. Thank you, Spud Fishing. You guys are awesome. Thank you, Statue Junkie. Awesome. Um, do I have any of the Retro 51 Gnome Roasty? Um, if you look it up on our website, if it shows in stock, we still have them. If it shows out of stock, then we don't have them. The inventory is all live um, and up to date on our website. Um, Pink Electron says, is it heavy? Um, it depends. It's a pretty big pen, I will say here. Uh, I know this like isn't good reference at all. Let me tilt this back up a little bit. Uh, this pen is kind of as big as my hand. Like this is the base of my palm, it goes all the way up. So that's pretty, it's pretty large. Oh, you know what? Even better, I have a ruler right here. Check me out. Here we go. So this pen is pretty big, six inches, um, but it's not too heavy. Um, the zeolite material is very lightweight because it's porous, um, so it's not too bad. And Peniter does a phenomenal job at their piston mechanism. 
um, where the piston head normally on a lot of pens are right here. Um, but on Peniter, there's actually a drive shaft that goes from the piston knob down the center of the pen. The actual piston housing is like right here. And then that goes into the grip section. So the ink well is actually like right about here. So all of the weight is brought down. So it feels very balanced in the hand despite being larger. Uh, no, I'll go back to the Jesus pen right now. It's this Tabaldi. Let's go back to it. Um, but yeah, this is a pen that I'm carrying with me every day. All right, let's get back to it. And I need to catch up to these comments real quick, y'all. One second. Uh, Dior, too valid. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Uh, Doug Dimadab. That is a freaking hilarious name. Dude, your profile picture is awesome. Did you make that yourself? Um, what is your pick for first high-end pen? Let's say 200 to 300. Um, something from Pilot, for sure. Doug. Doug Dimadab. Um, something from Pilot, absolutely. Uh, if you like something that is great for everyday carry, especially for, um, you know, work, uh, Galen Leather um, Ruler, Brass Ruler. This is from Galen Leather. It's entirely made out of brass. Um, but this is the Pilot Vanishing Point. For $156, you absolutely can't go wrong. If you want a more traditional pen, I would highly recommend the Pilot Custom 74. Um, but if your budget is between $200 and $300, Doug, I would 1,000% check out the Pilot Custom 823. That's okay, Doug. I, I think I missed it the first time. Um, but if someone could type that in the chat for me, Pilot Custom 823. Um, it's at $288. That is one of the best um fountain pens in that price range uh tick tank dot d excuse me um we do not ship to the uk let me switch cameras real quick so we ship all over the us anything over 60 dollars is free shipping um we also offer shipping to canada and mexico and we also offer international shipping to any country in the eu the european union so if your country uh, where you're shipping to is in the European Union. We can ship to you. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the UK is no longer a part of the European Union, so we cannot. Um, but if you can find maybe an intermediary shipping, maybe you know somebody in the States that can ship to you, we would love your support. Uh, but as for right this moment, unfortunately, we are unable to ship to the United Kingdom. Sorry about that. Breadline 511, yeah, man, that's our whole business. Of course people buy these pens. That's how I, uh, you know, live. <laughs> Yeah, if you have the Twisby 580, that was actually my first fountain pen of all time. Um, and then I kind of moved on to my first high-end pen being the vanishing point. Uh, Sniffs, our cheapest fountain pen uh, is the Pilot Varsity, is a disposable fountain pen from Pilot for like 319, three bucks. It's a pretty good deal. And it's still a good pen. Malicious, yes, thank you so much for waiting. Let's go ahead and show off the Jesus pen one more time. All right, so let's do unboxing round two. So Tobaldi limited edition, Benonia Divine. So this pen, you can find it on our website under the name Tobaldi Benonia Divine. Comes in this beautiful, highly glossy gift box that has this absolutely amazing kind of texturing to it. And inside this box, we have the pen inside of a gorgeous, simple pen pillow. You can see this is wood on the inside. Magnets right here, keeping the box shut. You sell homes, Redline. You're probably, uh, you know, you're probably doing pretty good though, you know? <laughs> uh, this is my personal carrying case. Um, one of my close friends made this for me by hand for my birthday, so. Um, I would check out Galen Leather cases on our website, atlasstationers.com, under the brand Galen Leather. Um, here, real quick, just for you. That's the name, Galen Leather. They have amazing products. It's entirely hand-stitched, 100% full-grain leather, uh, Turkish leather, um, and they do amazing work, so I would check that out. Uh, but this is the Tabaldi Benonia Divine, which gets its name from this pink electron you asked that question at the perfect time because this pen is called the divine because of this beautiful 
intricate stamping done on the nib. So this is a solid 18 karat, 750 gauge gold nib that is plated in rhodium and stamped with the image of Christ on the cross here. So, you know, it's very rare to see custom stamping done on these pens because it's a very expensive and involved process for such a limited run. Uh, but Tibaldi was happy to do it on such an amazing pen. Sniffs and Malicious, this pen it costs $600 right now on atlasstationers.com, down from $750. You know, if you, uh, if you paid the right guy enough money, I'm sure they could do custom stamping for you. But uh, I will tell you, it would not be cheap. <laughs> it, it would be incredibly expensive. But, you know, you could probably make it happen. Vince Pearson, the Parker IM, is a great entry-level fountain pen from France. It's all aluminum body that's anodized, so you really can't go wrong with the Parker IM. That's a great question. I can't get enough of this nib. Seriously, it is one of the most beautiful nibs of all time. You can check out the photography that I did for this pen on our website, atlasstationers.com. You know, if you guys could do these awesome custom nibs, especially if it's based around a meme, I would I would become an investor. I would go in on the Kickstarter. <laughs> Fuzz Drive, this is a limited edition $600 pen, so I cannot write with it, unfortunately. But... Of all the Tibaldi Bononias with the gold nibs that I've tried, it's incredibly smooth right or out of the box. Um, nothing necessarily out of the ordinary for an 18 karat gold nib, but you will get a very smooth, soft writing experience. Man, y'all are too funny. You're being so sweet. Buying a nib stamping machine? Dude, good luck. Those are expensive. You're talking about a $30,000 investment at least. <laughs> Uh, no, we actually have quite a number of these, but I just cannot test this one. You know, once uh, limited edition pieces like this make contact with ink, we can no longer consider it a new product. Um, so, you know, if this was a standard edition pen, I would love to dip test it. But because of its limited edition nature, I cannot. The first person to ink this pen will be its owner, as it should be. Sorry about that, y'all. I know. It's hard to show off a pen without writing with it, too. I totally understand that, so I, I do apologize. But uh, it is what it is. So once again, Tibaldi Benonia Divine, limited edition, atlasstationers.com, 600 bucks. Amazing. Uh, you know, Sniffs, a, a big thing about collecting fountain pens is you really just stick to whatever budget you are comfortable with. Uh, let me go ahead and switch my uh, camera real quick, y'all. Um, you know, all of my pens um, when I was in high school, you know, obviously I'm in high school. I was delivering pizza, so I'm super broke. <laughs> you know, so my most expensive pen was like my first pen ever. It was the Twisby Diamond 580, but I knew it was a pen that I would take care of and use um, since I was doing so much art, um, you know, every day of my life. Uh, so I knew it would be a great option for me. Um, so, you know, it was 55 bucks for my first fountain pen ever. That's pretty expensive, especially when you're just used to uh, a couple of, you know, a couple dollars for a pen is even can be expensive. Um, but there's so many great options that are really affordable. So you guys should never feel like, um, you, you know, have to kind of make these super expensive pens, your grail pens. So at the end of the day, $600 is a lot of money. You know, you can do a lot with 600 bucks. Um, but it's really when you can learn to appreciate the materials and the you know design process uh the beauty and the craftsmanship of these pens where it really becomes more worthwhile um you know for me my very first expensive fountain pen was the pilot vanishing point at 156 and now that's it's literally one of my most affordable pens in my collection um, but it's because you know i've been in this industry i've been into fountain pens for over a decade so it's a long time coming so don't feel, you know, don't feel like you have to kind of reach for these pens. There's so many amazing options. Um, you know, Twisby Eco is like 33 bucks. It's one of the best fountain pens that you can get 
you know, in general, and it's only $33. Um, you know, the Lamy Safari is one of the most popular fountain pens of all time, and it's only 29 bucks. Uh, so, you know, there's so many good options right there, and even if you never hit past $100, you're still having a ton of options for really, really good pens. You guys can always check out on our website, under our specials, we have a section called Getting Started. If you go to that page on our website, it is all about affordable entry-level options that are a great way to dip your toes into this hobby without committing you know, a ton of money on something that you may not fall in love with. Shoto Ghosty is a perfect example. Can't find myself spending more than a Kaveco amount. It's perfect for so cheap. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, no, it, it's it's not related to pens, but I, I would. <laughs> I, I think I would get one. Um, the kid KW asked, do you ship to Kuwait? Unfortunately, we do not. Uh, we ship to anywhere in the United States, Mexico, Canada, and any country in the European Union. It's a great question. I love the questions, guys. I'm trying to keep up. Um... Sniffs asks, well, I'm obsessed with pens that glide easy on paper. Um, you should try just any fountain pen. Uh, fountain pens are meant to glide on paper. Uh, Rocks Moxie, did you miss the Jesus pen? Yes, you did. But you know what? I'm just going to keep busting it out. It's no big deal. <laughs> we didn't show off that many pens today, so I'm trying to fill the space. Uh, so I'm more than happy to pull this out one more time. Uh, Sniffs, you're asking for a link. Go on our website, atlasstationers.com, and go to the brand Kaveco. I would highly recommend the Kaveco Classic Sport as somebody's first fountain pen. That's another amazing entry-level option that is sub $30. Here we go. One more time. The Tabaldi Bononia Divine. We, um, we called it the Jesus pen for the views. Opinions on a Pilot um, 192 with an FA nib, Pilot Falcon, or Justice 95? That is a great question. W. Taylor, I will answer that in just one moment. Let me just show off this pen one more time. Check out this nib. Solid 18 karat gold that is plated in rhodium to give it the silver coloring. And then it is two-toned, so you still have that exposed yellow gold underneath here. In a beautiful, delicate design. 912, I knew what you meant. It's all good. <laughs> but look at this nib. It is seriously phenomenal. That's an excellent decision. F4. I know what your name says, but I can't say it in the chat. Or I can't say it live, but uh, that's a great option. Is this what the Pope signs papers with? Maybe, um, I don't know. You know, I know the new Pope is all about not really, uh, you know, being too glamorous. So I don't know if you would really want to use a $600 pen. <laughs> uh, would the ink use wear off the rhodium? Absolutely not, Pink Electron. Rhodium, um, no, I can't. <laughs> I, I just don't want to get in trouble, guys. <laughs> Um, rhodium is a rare earth metal that does not interact with ink. So rhodium is going to be totally safe for any uh, fountain pens, um, any fountain pen friendly ink. <laughs> oh my god, shut up, Ghost. You know, I wouldn't even be surprised. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous swirling here, as we can see. And I just want to say one more time, since I'm showing off this pen again, that this swirling pattern is unique on every single pen. So some pens may have more brown, some pens may have even more ivory. The distribution may be totally different. So just keep that in mind that these are entirely hand uh, or, or hand poured. So they're all unique. Uh, Nathan is smart asked, do you use squid ink for dip pens? I don't know what type of natural inks are used, uh, especially when it comes to dip pens, um, but that's a great question. You know, I, I really wouldn't be surprised if you could use that type of ink, um, but I would prefer to keep it vegan, if you ask me. No need to get the animals involved like that. Uh, Rocks Moxie, here, let me switch the, let me switch the camera again, so I'm not just holding this pen up forever. 
Um, can't stop thinking about the $5,000 pen from a few weeks ago. How long does it take to sell? Um, were you talking about the Montegrappa Lord of the Rings or the uh, Montegrappa um, Beauty and the Beast pen that we showed off with the gold lion's head uh, or beast head? Kind of looks like a lion. Um, those take some time to sell. You know, they don't sell quickly. You know, they're really making their way to collectors. So collectors definitely take their time, usually not impulse buyers. So they'll, they might sit in the shop for a month or maybe multiple months, um, but they always go eventually. Uh, yeah, that was the uh, Tibaldi Benonia Divine, which we're calling the Jesus Pen. If you guys want to see this again, just let me know. I will show it off again, but I'm going to keep asking questions. Yeah, the Montegrappa um, is absolutely gorgeous, the newest one that came out. So I would check it out in the New Arrivals, Rocks Moxie, atlasstationers.com, New Arrivals. The Blue Rocket is a life goal. Yeah, that is the ST DuPont Space Odyssey Prestige Edition. Um, Bray Hops asked, are these dip pens? No, they're fountain pens. So fountain pens have an internal ink reservoir, whether that is a cartridge or a built-in mechanism of the pen. Um, that's what makes it different from a dip pen is that it has its own reservoir. So it's going to continue to run and write until it goes completely dry of ink. Um, Bray Hops, that's an excellent question. Okay, W. Taylor, yes. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, so between the Pilot 912 with the Falcon nib or a Pilot Falcon or Justice 95. So let's kind of break these pens down. Um, we're basically looking at one nib uh, on two different barrels or the Justice 95, which has a totally unique nib. Um, here, let me actually, let me see if I can get those pens pulled for us real quick so I can have a visual. Uh, could you pull out of the display the uh, Custom 912, the Pilot Falcon, and then the Justice 95 for me? Thanks, dude. Uh, Callie Bitter, heard about the Jesus pen. Yeah, you guys all did, huh? Probably uh, helps that it's the title of the live. I'm going to go ahead and keep showing this off until I get those three pens pulled for me. Um, w. Taylor, so just wait a little bit longer, and then I can give you a much better explanation. Julio Catan 68, thank you for the 10 pandas. Thank you so much. Uh, give us the T, our cartridges hashtag basic. No, absolutely not, Shuttle Ghosty. You know what's even more hipster than using a converter and bottled ink um, is filling your own cartridges with a syringe. So it's not basic. It can actually be the opposite. But honestly, cartridges are good. You know, the. Uh, a big thing about pens, guys, is there's no right or wrong. It's really all about lifestyle. If you, you know, have a pen that you'd rather have cartridges with, maybe it's easier for work. Maybe you work in a setting where you cannot get ink on your hands. Cartridges are an excellent option to make sure that you're never worrying about, you know, um, having to refill a pen and maybe getting ink on yourself. Um, this one and then the 912. Um, maybe have Philip grab it. Um, Shuttle Ghosty, yeah, I avoid them for the most part because of the plastic waste as well, um, but you can refill them. Um, I like to refill pilot cartridges because they last a really long time. I also like to refill my Kaveco standard international cartridges because the Kaveco converter is uh, tiny. <laughs> they need to do an inverted design called Lucifer. That would be really cool, but probably a little bit sketchy um, for their brand. I think this is super respectable and very tasteful. Um, in my opinion, a Lucifer one would be equally awesome and tasteful, but that's just me, you know? All right. Uh, that and this. And um, can I also get the Justice 95? It looks like this pen. Um, it kind of looks like this pen. Thanks, Drew. All right, I'm almost there. Thank you so much for your patience, y'all. My phone's also on 10%, so I don't know how much longer I can go. But I will go until this pen dies, or this phone dies. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus pen. Tibaldi Benonia Divine. All right, I'm putting that away for right now, okay? Okay, so we have three pens that we're talking about here. Uh, w. Taylor just confirmed for me that you're still here. <laughs> uh, so we have the Pilot Falcon, the Custom 912, and the Justice 95. So the main difference between these pens with the Falcon nib and this pen is the nib itself. So what I would say to help you decide, W. Taylor, is 
if you want a very affordable Falcon Flex nib, go with the Pilot Falcon. But you can see right here that there is a fair difference in the size of the pens. Let's go ahead and take the caps off. Um, this isn't a Falcon nib, but it's just to give you a good example. Um, so the Pilot Falcon is a little bit smaller, a little bit thinner. So if you want the most affordable option in a slightly thinner pen, the Pilot Falcon is going to be a great option at $180. If you want something a little bit more substantial, then the Custom 912 is the way to go. It's only $40 more expensive. So for, you know, getting that beautiful Falcon nib, I would absolutely go for the 912 for you, um, especially if you have bigger hands. Like this is the 912 on my hand. I would definitely go for the 912 over the Falcon. Uh, but in my personal collection, I actually own a Falcon. Um, but, you know, if I could go back in time and they offered it, I'd probably get the 912. Um, so if you want a bigger pen, then I would go with that. The reason that you would go with a Justice 95 over either of these options is because of its super unique design with the crown. So this is a, cus or a Justice 95, right? Uh, just a girl with four dogs. That's awesome that you have four dogs. This is not the Jesus pen. I will go back to it. So just stay tuned and I'll go back to it. All right. Oh, so this is the Pilot Justice 95. What you get with this pen is a adjustable crown that you can see there is an indication for H and S. H means hard, S means soft. So the further this crown is pushed back on this pen, the more uh, softer it will write. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see here let me try to zoom in here so this while it's fully back has that nice softness to it you can see that nib has a lot more bounce right when you bring this collar all the way up it's stiff it has a tiny bit of bounce but it really doesn't want to so it's just kind of resisting that motion so it's a much stiffer nib what I will say, though, is this, even on full soft, does not flex nearly as much as a Pilot Falcon. I would kind of consider, oh, I can't focus. Here we go. I would consider the Justice 95 to be able to write more like a soft fine when it's all the way on its softest setting, and it would write just like a regular hard fine when it's all the way on its hardest setting. So if you want really delicate lines and really subtle line variation, then the Justice 95 is a great option that also allows you to still do everyday writing on the hardest setting and then everything in between. So it's a very unique pen that gives you a lot of flexibility, especially without changing the way that you write and rather just adjusting this mechanism here. Um, so that is why I would get a Justice 95. But if you're just looking for flex, honestly, I would go with the 912 with the Falcon nib if you want a bigger pen or the Pilot Falcon um, if you want a smaller pen. So that is what I would have to say about that. Thanks. It's a great question, man. Let me know if that helped you enough. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Okay, uh, just a girl with four dogs. This is the Tabaldi Bononia Divine, uh, which we called uh, the Jesus pen. Yeah, W. Taylor, no problem, man. It's my pleasure. Uh, so the reason that this one is called the Divine is not only is it beautiful Italian ivory colored resin, but the nib is all the magic here. Has an absolutely gorgeous two-tone stamping on this 18 karat nib of Christ. Awesome. Okay, I'm gonna put this pen down again because we're getting lots of questions, y'all. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Leaning towards the 912 for sure. Thanks for your help, no problem, man. And you guys can always shoot me an email um, if you guys have any questions about the pens. Um, you can reach me at my work email at uh, alvin at atlasstationers.com. If you guys ever have questions about your orders, need help troubleshooting the pens, I'm your guy, no problem. Um, sweet. So the pink electron asks, are there better or worse inks for different pen types? Um, yeah, you know, everything matters. What I would say is the fountain pens are like a triangle where you have the pen, the ink, and the paper. They are all equally important. 
uh, when it comes to getting the best writing experience. Um, so you really want to consider different things about each pen, uh, and this really becomes more apparent to you as you get more experience. Um, but for me, um, finding a pen that feels great in your hand and also performs the way that you want. Some pens are redder, uh, wetter writers than others. For example, a Pelican is going to write a lot more wet than, um, say, like a Twisby. You know, they're both internal piston fillers, but one is tuned to write wetter than the other. Um, something else to consider is how wet the ink is itself. Um, so if you have a really wet pen, like a, um, like a Pelican M600, M800, M1000, and you pair it with a really wet ink, guess what? You're gonna have an even wetter writing experience where you're really gonna lay down a lot of ink on the paper and get really beautiful shading, really beautiful sheening. If you guys are curious about shading and sheening, we do have videos breaking those concepts down on our TikTok, so check those out. Um, but say you really like the Pelican and the way that it writes, but you want it to be a little bit drier without changing anything about the pen. You can pick a drier ink like Parker Quink is a great option. Uh, Ferris Wheel Press is a great option for an ink that is a bit drier. Um, and you can kind of get a little bit more balance of having a wet writing pen that's not too wet for your taste. Um, and then paper. Um, you always want to use fountain pen friendly paper, but even that makes the difference. Um, take uh, always pay attention to uh, the GSM of the paper. GSM is grams per square meter, and that is literally a measurement of how heavy um, the paper is and uh, how thick it is. Um, you know, if you're using like a super lightweight paper like Tomoe River 52 GSM, it's going to allow all that ink to sit on top of the page. It takes a longer time to dry, but you get a more beautiful finish with shading and sheening. Um, whereas if you go for like Leuch term 120 GSM or you go for the Rhodia 90 GSM or even like Odyssey Notebooks 160 GSM, those are going to absorb the ink more and it's going to absorb it quicker. So with those thicker papers, you're going to get a faster drying experience. Um, but, you know, the, uh, the kind of downside of that is that you're going to get less shading and probably no sheening or very, very little sheening. Um, so it's really important to kind of consider those things of having a good pen, good ink, and good paper. Uh, what pens can I use for watercolor paper? Fountain pens? All fountain pens work amazing on watercolor paper. So, you know, any fountain pen. <laughs> um, if you uh, have a more specific need, um, if you need specifically a fine liner, or if you need something with line variation, let me know in the chat. It's a great question. Um, sweet. Yep, Shoto Ghosty, paper matters a lot. Uh, what is the best Parker G2 refill? Um, do you mean like a compatible refill? Uh, Vince Pearson, if you mean a compatible refill, I highly recommend the Schmidt Easy Flow 9000. It is a, a gel style refill that is the Parker ballpoint format. Um, so that fits in most ballpoint pens. Uh, it is kind of considered the standard um, for most pens. Um, but you get a wetter, smoother writing experience, and all of the Schmidt refills use a ceramic point, so it's even smoother than your typical metal point uh, roller balls and ball points. It's a great question. I have a glass dip pen. I don't know what it's called. Um, if you're talking about model, I'm not sure if I can help with that, but it is just called a glass dip pen, so that, that is the, the correct terminology for it. Um, is there a good pen and ink combo for regular paper? Yeah, this is a great question. This is something that we get a lot from a, a lot of our uh, people who are up in the offices. Um, a really good combination for pen and ink when you're looking at cheap or you know copy paper, printer paper, whatever you wanna call it. Um, you wanna use a fine or extra fine nib and a dry quick, uh, a drier writing and quick drying ink. Um, so really any fine or extra fine pen is gonna be just fine, <laughs> no pun intended, but you wanna definitely use a quick drying ink. Um, so I would highly recommend Parker Quink. You can find that on our website. It comes in black, blue, black, and blue. Um, it's formulated to stay wet in the pen, but once it's on the paper, it dries very quickly. Uh, so it's a great option for people who need something that works on bad paper and something that will dry immediately. Otherwise, you know, fine or extra fine um, with, you know, just a standard ink is probably gonna be okay for you. Um, my favorite ink color of all time is Orochizuku Yamabudo. Um, one of my favorites of all time. I've gone through like two bottles already, it's bad. 
I keep just rebuying it instead of trying to empty my other inks. Uh, user 707 requesting the Jesus pen. Let's make it happen. Once more, this is the Tabaldi Bononia Divine available on atlasstationers.com for $600. It is a limited edition release. So if you guys are interested, definitely pick it up soon because they're not going to stay around for too, too long. Cape May is such a good ink too. Shuttle Ghosty, if you like Cape May from Colorverse, I would definitely check out Three Oysters, Marine Green or Marine Blue. They are awesome. Or Peacock Blue, I think it's called. Uh, but this is the Tobaldi Bononia Divine. The reason that we uh, called it the Jesus Pen on our live stream today is the beautiful two-tone stamping of Christ on the nib. This is solid 18 karat gold that is plated in rhodium to give it that coloring. Awesome. All right. I think that is the last time I can shut pen off y'all. Uh, somebody a while ago was also asking about the Retro 51 uh, Loteria. So I actually have one right here that I can open for us. So let's do a quick unboxing and then I gotta go. I I've definitely gone a little overboard here, but you guys have been absolutely phenomenal with the interaction. So thank you all so, so much for taking the time uh, today with Tuesdays with Alvin. Let's go ahead and put this away real quick. Uh, w Taylor 376, we do not carry noodlers. So no, we do not carry the infinite base state blue. But let's go ahead and push this aside and take a look at this. So this is the new Retro 51 Loteria. I was given the go ahead to open this up. Normally we wouldn't open these up, but let's do it. Oh, well, that's perforated, but it did not tear. Oh man, this is really just not tearing. All right, <laughs> get that plastic out of here. Uh, Navy Nico 83, one of my favorite fountain pens of all time is the Pilot Vanishing Point. So here is the Retro 51 Tornado is what they call it. So if you guys didn't know, this is like a Mexican uh, bingo style game. I've like played it once in my whole life, so I really don't know much about it. So I'm not going to culturally appropriate or spread misinformation about what this game is. Um, but if anyone's in the chat wants to explain what the game is, uh, you know, if they could do it in a one sentence or two sentences, that would be awesome. So you can see all of the different uh, motifs on here. El Ranger, El Tornado, El Gallo, El Mundo, El Goro, El Parajo, Pajaro, Payaro. I'm sorry. I can barely speak English, y'all. It's literally Mexican bingo. Oh, okay, that's cool. Oh, look, he's holding a retro. Wait, I didn't even notice that. Guys, this is sick. Look at this discovery. He's holding a retro 51, but it looks massive in his hands. <laughs> this is also a Jesus pen. La Luna, La Potea, El Sol. I believe these are available right now on atlasstationers.com for $53, $54. I'm so sorry. I, I wasn't supposed to show this one off today. Um, so I don't know the exact price, but it's somewhere in $50. So what you have is all brass body, brass aged brass appointments. You've got the little like bean counters on the top finial. That's really awesome. And then this is a twist to extend. So you twist this top knurled section and you get the awesome rollerball refill from Retro 51. Uh, Vince, do you have big or small hands, man? That's a great question though. If you have a hard time finding pens. You know, I don't know if you're local, but I would highly recommend you know, come into a shop, even if it's not our shop, if you've got a local one, that's the best way to try out pens or, you know, just feel them in the hands. Big? Um, 
Yeah, I would... Uh, you know what, Vince? What I'll say is if you shoot me an email, alvin at atlasstationers.com, I could probably help you out a little bit more than this live since I got to go soon. Um, but you can also DM us. Maybe DM us on, uh, on Instagram, and I can definitely help you with that as well, all right? Um, but if you want to talk to me directly, email me, and uh, I can definitely help you out. Of course, man, no problem. So this is awesome. It's a limited edition. So this one here, you guys can see, is 907. Um, I don't know how many of these there are. I really wish I was a little bit more well prepared for this. Um, but there it is. A trip to Atlas is worth the trip. And we're in downtown Chicago, guys. Let me flip the camera one more time while I kind of put this away for my last little goodbye. Um, we're in downtown Chicago. We are not too far from all of the big tourist attractions. So, you know, if you're looking to have a vacation out in Chicago, it's super easy to come see us. As you can see, the train goes right past us. The Clark and Lake stop is right next to us. So if you're comfortable with using the public transportation, it's so easy to get all around the city and come and see us. Um, but I got to call it here, guys. This is Tuesdays with Alvin. Thank you guys so, 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 so much for all of your support and all of your comments. You guys seriously have commented like a million questions today. I love it. Uh, my name's Alvin. This is Tuesdays with Alvin. <laughs> I know we don't put it in the title anymore. Um, but yeah, my name's Alvin. Uh, you can find a little about, uh, more about me on the website. Um, you can contact me at alvin at atlasstations.com uh, or you can DM us. But I gotta get going. I gotta help my team close up the shop and I got a lot of work I still gotta do. So it has been an absolute pleasure and I'll see you guys next week. Tuesdays, 3 p.m. Central Time. See y'all.